Hello, hello. Welcome to the Five Talents Podcast. I'm your host, Abel Pacheco. I interview the top commercial real estate investors and industry experts so you can learn from their experiences. So if you're an investor, a high W-2 earner or real estate or tech sales professional that wants to invest in real estate without having to manage properties or leave your day job, then this podcast is for you. Or if you're already investing in real estate, but you're doing it part-time and you wanna become a full-time multifamily or full-time commercial real estate investor, this podcast is for you too. You're gonna learn a ton. You will learn from real life multifamily investors and other professionals in the industry. They're gonna share their blueprints for success and I'm super excited that you're here. So I hope you enjoy the show. Hello, hello. My name is Abel Pacheco, and I'm your host for the Five Talents Podcast. We're super excited today to have an amazing guest. Um, If you've been around the multifamily community, you probably know either his name, his face, uh, his story, or all the above, Mr. K.K. Singh. uh, K.K., thank you very much for for joining us. Thank you for having me on your show, Abel. Yes, sir. I'm I'm humbled, and I'm very appreciative, and, uh, you know, just just to have a uh, high quality caliber guest like yourself that has a lot of experience. Uh, we're just super excited. So thank you. Appreciate um, it. Yes, sir. Before we jump in, let me at least, you know, tell our listeners and our viewers um, a little bit about you. So uh, interesting enough, Microsoft certified system engineer uh, originally, and, and you, you were a successful entrepreneur, multiple different, you know, business owner. I, I've heard enough podcasts where, you know, you own some gas stations, convenience stores, laundromat. You uh, really jumped into, I think, in the, on the real estate, the residential side with a portfolio, 40 single, uh, 40 single family rentals in a portfolio all at once. Uh, and this is all in Indiana, correct? Correct. Okay, gotcha. So that's where, where KK's from. And um, so I know you're, you're also an investor, uh, passively, uh, 2,900 units plus as a limited partner and a general partner. So in right. multifamily syndication. So obviously we're going to dig into that, you know, in the show as well. And, uh, you know, you, you have, you, so you, you bring experience from an entrepreneurship, a business, uh, ownership experience from India and then, you know, 10 plus years there and another 19 plus years in the US. So obviously some very different views uh, that our listeners would probably benefit, you know, on both, but uh, you know, the, very, very nice to have you. And thanks for joining. We appreciate Thank it. Thank you very much. I appreciate it for having me on your show and it's my pleasure. Yes, sir. And the moment I see Microsoft certified, I don't know if I've missed that, uh, but I, I love seeing it now because uh, I, I worked at a company called Rackspace as an IT hosting company. So I'm very familiar with the, the you know, the, all the, all the tech I, we do deal, we deal with a lot of tech uh, people. So um, anyways, please give us a little bit of, of your backstory, you know, for, for those that have never heard KK Singh and, and your story, man, you've got an amazing one. If you could start there, that'd be awesome. What, you know, what you're doing today and how you started. Uh, my name is KK Singh. Is KK Singh is my American name. My full name is Christian Singh. So uh, I came here in 2000. It's 20 years now. And for one year, I was in Indianapolis. And 19 years, I have been here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And uh, I, I had a job very short time. So I moved uh, into, I lost my job and moved into the gas station business. Uh, because uh, uh, my friends had a couple of gas stations and when I lost my job, they asked me to come come and help them out, out with the, the gas stations. So I started with the gas stations as a cashier 20 years ago, <laughs> getting paid $5.15 yep. at that time. That's, that was the was minimum, state, wage state minimum wage in Indiana. So that's where I started and... Uh, after about six months, we lost the lease on that gas station again. So we came here to Fort Wayne and bought a gas station uh, in partnership with my cousin who came from India at that time. Mm-hmm. He had some money, we had some money. So we bought this gas station here in downtown Fort Wayne. And uh, that's where my gas station career started. Uh, and then 
After that, we kept buying a gas station almost every year for several years. <laughs> nice, nice. And in 2012, uh, I decided to uh, diversify into laundromats. I did a research on the laundromat for one year before building it from ground up. Then I built a laundromat, which is one of its kinds in the state of Indiana. Wow. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So uh, before we get into the multifamily side, how, how did you actually do that? Did you, did, were you raising capital then? Did you have your own money? Did you partner with a bunch of people? Did you do the active sweat equity work and other people join? How, how did that, how did that happen? You bought one a year and then you actually developed your own. Okay. And uh, most of my partners are friends and family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And at one point or the other, they all worked for me. Mm -hmm. So once they worked for me for a decent amount of time and uh, I brought them as my partners mm -hmm. and uh, they have been with me for 20 years and, and my daughter, my son-in-law, my nephew, they're all my partners and we all uh, manage two, we used to manage two gas stations. Uh, each one of us used to ma manage two gas stations before I got into multifamily. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. actually uh, I started with single family, not the multifamily. Mm -hmm. So somebody uh, wanted to retire at the age of 82 years. And uh, he offered me a portfolio of 40 single family houses. And I had no idea how to buy these, how to uh, underwrite these. And uh, I didn't even know what cap rate is at that time. Sure. So, yeah. but this guy was very trustworthy. He's very senior in our community. I just trusted him and I didn't even hire an attorney. I bought, <laughs> I bought all his properties, wrote the PSA myself. I had some experience from gas stations. Sure. It does some transactions. And all that. So yeah. uh, I, I didn't even hire an attorney to buy all these uh, single family properties. Talk about taking action. And, and some people, it's hard to pull the trigger on one. And uh, you're, you're, you're jumping in a 40 unit, a 40 unit single family portfolio single from the start. And I started managing myself. <laughs> You're, yeah. you're thinking, well, I, I manage my, my, my convenience stores and gas stations. How different th could this be, right? There's well, just 40 I, of them. Yeah. At, at, at that time, I was managing two gas stations and a laundromat. So I handed over one of my gas stations to my partner and started managing one laundromat and a gas station and started managing these 40 single family because the previous owner, the seller, mm -hmm. he, he offered to help me for a year. Oh, well, that was good. Yeah. yeah. To, so that I learned the business and uh, I, I wanted to do it myself. I didn't want to hire a management company because I wanted to learn the business. Mm -hmm. So I decided to learn from him. And in 10 days, I realized that he is uh, old school and he was doing everything with pen and paper. He was there from <laughs> nine to five. I oh, said, wow, yeah. I, I don't like to do this. I can't do it because I have other businesses that I, I, I have to spend time on. So I just let him go after 10 days. And uh, I started uh, researching online and found a property management software. I uploaded all my properties to, I mean, very 15 days to one month. I, I was working like 12, 14, 16 hours a day to yeah. get everything online. And uh, once I got everything in a couple of months, I was spending only nine hours a week. Oh yeah, that's a big difference. And he was sure glad you let him off uh, after 10 days. He was happy and uh, you yeah. were happy as well. So that, that was right. a, an amazing transition. Uh, right. Taking some of the, the things that were very much uh, manual and making them automated processes, which probably saved you a bunch, like you said. Well, yep. uh, how did you, uh, the original 40 uh, single family portfolio, did you buy like conventional loans? Did you all do some creative financing? Did he kind of help you, the previous owner? Or, how, you know, just curious about the first deal. Okay, he gave us an offer. And I asked him why he wanted to sell those to me. Why don't he sell somewhere else who knows this business? And he had sold those houses twice before he sold it to us. 
and those those guys couldn't get financing and he said i know i'm already 82 i don't know i how long i'm going to live uh, he's still alive though mm-hmm. and and i have sold those houses actually mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so uh, he said i want to get out of it as soon as possible so i know you can get a loan so he gave us an offer a one year financing mm-hmm. for the full amount yeah or wow. and he said if you get your own loan that's another option too so i went to a bank got a conventional loan one uh, entity one loan and uh, he gave me a free house for that <laughs> you're like buy 39 and you'll get one for free or was it yep. 40 and he gave you the 41st <laughs> yep no the he gave me one free for <laughs> getting our own loan so he was totally out of the deal Mm-hmm. in 10 days he didn't even have to help me out with the stuff nice nice yeah. and uh that's awesome so but somewhere through the process so that first of all that was probably a lesson in a lot of things creative financing uh the, the automation the ability to systematize the business save a lot of time uh a lot of a lot of lessons i'm sure scale how, right. how what what was the decision or the mindset that said you know what i got to move from single family houses i'm going to get rid of this portfolio sell it and move to multifamily which is you know we love to hear about multifamily syndication paths to financial freedom things like that so man what was the what was the mindset how how did that happen well with my businesses i was paying a lot of tax mm. and i thought we bought some real estate we have some rental houses now we will not have will have to pay much tax so we bought these houses in june and uh, when i paid my taxes next year i paid even more <laughs> i said we are not doing something right because we in <laughs> the months we ma- we made 70000 income and we had to pay tax on that plus our gas station business which we were previously doing so i said we are doing something wrong i i got to find something i started researching and i found the process of syndication Mm-hmm. I said, okay. Then I learned more about cost segregation, bonus depreciation, and all that. I said, okay, this is the key. This is the right way to do it. This is the right way to do. And uh, I immediately, uh, I, I, I was uh, learning a lot from the bigger pockets. Yep. So uh, that's where I met a lot of syndicators. I, I followed some syndicators, called some syndicators, and learned and read some books too. So. i immediately decided to invest passively in my first deal before i knew much at that time either mm-hmm. so i just invested in one of the deals and uh, from there i started learning spending a lot of time learning and i, I actually i had passion for it yeah. i didn't even know until i started doing it i had passion for it yes so i i started attending boot camps uh, seminars meetups yes. online online uh, sessions started and writing deals and and I, i got to a point where i started coaching other people that's awesome yep and oh keep going please 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 so i i i started coaching so i've been coaching for the last two years now and i i love sharing my knowledge i sh- love sharing my success yes so i was i was doing online uh, sessions every tuesday getting a bunch of uh, people on my um, evening podcast it's not a podcast it was like a meet up like a group anyway. kind of web yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so when i was trying to coach others and and then i decided to move on to the gp side and mm-hmm. uh, i joined rod cleaves uh, mastermind and yep. uh, i i met a lot of syndicators well experienced syndicators and then i decided to move on to the gp side yeah you um by looking at your portfolio you're probably hundreds or whatever millions of dollars it's kind of hard to add up right um 2900 doors you know the the original businesses and then you joined uh a, a meet up i'm sorry a mastermind through rod cleaves event and i've heard him talk about those masterminds where it's like billions of dollars Yep. of assets under management between everybody in the mastermind um that 
learning from other people that are doing bigger or maybe there's some people that are peer level, some people that are a few steps ahead of you, and then some people are doing, you know, massive things, you know, much bigger. How did that stretch your, uh, your thinking about everything that, that we're doing? Well, I divided syndication to four or five different sections. Okay. And I decided to specialize in one rather than doing everything myself. Mm-hmm. and partner with the other people who are good at doing something else. So I, I started following some operational guys who, who do operations. And uh, I, I have good uh, track record. I'm, I'm a successful uh, entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have good reputation in my community. A lot of people know me. And because of, especially because of my unique identity, yes. they recognize me. And... Uh, I decided to start uh, raising money. Yeah, that's awesome. So I, I focus on raising capital for other people's deals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I have partnered with the three or three operational operators and to do you know, take down these deals. Yeah. Well, um, so that's awesome. Congratulations. I think that was a, an amazing choice by your background and, and everything that you're doing. So kudos and, and bless you in your continued business, man. That's awesome. What, what were those four to five? Uh, you said I broke down syndication in like four to five buckets or what were those big buckets? Well, the first thing is you have to source these deals. Okay. Yeah. You got to be, a, someone's got to find them. <laughs> yeah. You got to find them. You got to underwrite them. Okay. And I don't like doing cold calling, et cetera. Uh-huh. So I decided to skip that step. Okay. But, and the next step is underwriting, mm-hmm. underwriting the deals. Yep. And I learned underwriting. I spent a lot of time underwriting deals to make sure. And I, even before I got it as a GP, I was underwriting my deals to uh, invest. The ones you were in investing the, in. Yeah. Yeah. And the very first deal I invested without doing any homework at all. Just, I did the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just had a meeting with this um, uh, syndicator. Spent we had a half an hour appointment. We were late fifteen minutes because of the traffic, mm-hmm. and uh, we had only fifteen minutes at the end. I, it, I, I had a couple of my partners with me. They invested with me too. But in the first deal, they, they said only we have spent fifteen minutes. Let's wait. I said no. I'm not waiting. I gave him a check for fifty thousand dollars. And that's, I, I said, I'm taking action today. I don't want to wait until tomorrow. That's a definitely a difference though. It's, you know, you, you knew and studied enough on your own, bigger podcasts, following syndicators before you even met them. So you, you had already that initial education and you, you could identify uh, the difference between some people and not is like, well, how do I know when there's a diamond in the rough, they can't even evaluate or find it. But you had put in the time and effort and energy you, you could make that decision much more quickly than probably some of your other partners. And so yep, you did. That's the biggest thing because uh, uh, knowledge uh, is the main thing. Uh, you ha- if you have knowledge, you don't have, you don't fear. I mean, same mm-hmm. thing with the gas station business. Uh, we mm-hmm. had knowledge. We knew how to run these gas stations. I would go up by just go around the gas station and tell how much is it and give them an offer. Mm-hmm. even without underwriting or doing anything. Yep. Well, that's yeah. awesome. Uh, yeah. And I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure our listeners kind of heard that, right? So, so the, the four to five buckets, right? Sourcing them, underwriting them for those that, you know, are kind of newer. You, you literally take the financial analysis from the rent rolls and the T12s, the trailing 12, right. and then you put them in a long Excel and you put all this, you know, pro forma and expectation of assumptions and is it, can we make money on the deal, right? So that's right. the underwriting. And then the third uh, or what was the next next kind of thing? Next next thing is taking down the deal. Yes, sir. Good, going doing the PSA, um, arrange, uh, making your team and having the right people on the team, and that's the next step. And uh, that's lead needs a lot of work too. And, yeah. and the <laughs> oh, final, yeah. yeah, final step is the bringing the money for that deal. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. I chose to start with the bring the money, mm-hmm. and also I sit on asset management calls every week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're staying active. You're doing your part. You're learning. Uh, even I, I'm sure that 
you know, even though you're not in the direct sourcing, you're still looking at the numbers, you're making sure it's a quality investment for you and your investors, et cetera, et cetera. Correct. Uh, I like to awesome. get started from the very beginning of the process, mm -hmm. though mm -hmm. I, I'm not directly in charge of doing that, mm -hmm. but I like to get on a deal from the very beginning so that I know everything about the uh, deal mm -hmm. uh, rather than just uh, getting on the deal to raise money at the last minute and and people do that and mm -hmm. just raise money and then go find another deal. No, sure. I, I like to make sure that my investors are paid and also uh, make sure that the property is performing, what's going on the property day-to-day -day process. So I, I like to sit on the management calls, take minutes, write minutes and, and take notes and suggest things that needs to be done to the property. Because yeah, I, I have... I have done this for years. How many years has it been uh, in multifamily? Multifamily is four years. Okay. But years, 20 years, years of running business and businesses. And, and I, I own several property, gas station properties, and I own properties, vacant lots for the gas stations as well. So I'm very familiar with how to manage the assets. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. And that's probably like number five when you're talking about four to five steps, operating, asset Correct. management, you Correct. know, I like executing to, I, the business plan. Yep. Executing the business plan. I want to be a part of the executing business plan as well as uh, raising capital. Got it. Okay, great. And that, that, that's a good, good nugget uh, for those that are listening that may be trying to put together their first deal. And they think I've got to do all this like myself. I did it in single family. I can, I, ha I was able to do that myself. Me and my wife, we did, you know, eight deals and we did took down these properties and we did it ourselves. But in the multifamily, can you do it alone, KK? No, no, <laughs> it's a, it's a totally different animal. And that's what we thought in the beginning. When I started into multifamily, I just started giving offers like I did it in the houses. Yeah. So let them fly. Uh, but it didn't fly and uh, four of our offers were declined. Mm. And I thought, okay, we are not doing something right that everybody's bidding more than us. And we were underwriting, we, those were smaller properties, but we were underwriting the way we were, we underwrote the single family. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought, no, that's not something uh, we are doing right. So I decided to uh, do research and learn the process rather than just uh, uh, starting the process. So yeah. I stepped back, learned the process, and, and then went back again. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, love the, I love hearing that uh, when he said you wanted to master it, you like learning, you developed a passion for it through the learning process. You, uh, you, know, you started going to the boot camps and the seminars, and you know, I, I did the same thing. I think it really accelerated uh, the, the path of uh, learning, education, implementation. So uh, if you had anything to do different from what you, you know, would you, would you make any changes or would you do the exact same thing over again? Well, a lot of people say that if they, if they have to go back and start all over again, they would have started uh, with the single family. Uh -huh. No, sorry, multifamily. Multifamily, yep. Multifamily, but I think uh, we did the right way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Though we didn't know anything, we did everything wrong uh, when we started, but we were lucky enough uh, that we were able to sell those properties with, we, uh, in five years, we 10 x our money. Man, that's, that's a, a great amount of profit for doing it all wrong. <laughs> yeah, so, so I think uh, we did the right thing by going into the single family before we moved on to the multifamily. Yeah. I don't think somebody would have made 10x of money in the multifamily, 10x their money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we 10x our money in the single family portfolio. So yeah. I, I, I think uh, we did the right way. <laughs> I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't disagree, but my friend, I wouldn't disagree. Uh, for the passive investors that might be listening, um, you love to coach, you love to give back and that, that's great. What, um, let's start on the passive investor. You know, what, advice or what insight would you give them? You know, if they've just started learning, they realize, oh, you know, they're on the podcast now, they're listening. So they're seeking out this information. 
but they're, you know, maybe made their first one or two investments. What insights or wisdom could you give them? Okay. First of all, after my first deal that I told you that I just invested without even thinking. Mm -hmm. But after that, I, I thought, okay, no, I got, I got to master this too. So I prepared a list of 43 questions Mm -hmm. that every investor should be asking the syndicator. Mm -hmm. And I have like, five flags in those two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So five red flags. Okay. uh, In those, uh, after those 43 questions. So I, I normally even, I invest in every deal uh, that I am a GP on. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I'm not putting my money. I'm always, I'm the first investor in all my deals. Mm -hmm. So I always go through those questions with the, the, co-sponsor or the main operator. Mm -hmm. And I make sure all those five flags that I have on the list. Yeah. They are not one of them. Yeah. That makes sense. So I'd love to hear. Yeah. Can you share some of them? And I can, I can share the whole 43 questions and those flags with you. I can email you after we are done. Yep. You can share with your audience. And uh, I, I love answering those questions when my investors ask me those questions because I, I expect them to ask those questions because it, their money is like my money too. Yes. So, so I, I love to answer those questions and uh, I'll, I'll share that list with you after we are done. What a great, but, what a great value. I'm already, I'm, I'm happy that you joined. I'm even happier that our listeners are going to benefit. So that's, that's great. KK. Thank you. Yeah. And, and I can go over some of the questions if you want me to. Sure. Yeah, so absolutely. First, first thing I look at is, is the operators. Okay. Are they the real operators? There are, there are a lot of people They're They're not operators. They're just, they have their name, fame and, and uh, social media um, advertisement and all that. They, they just raise money and, and then somebody else is operating the, and, and they don't even know what's going on on the property. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So first off, my first thing is I want to look at the operator team. Do they have enough experience? Have they, have they done deals before? And the second one is the market. The, is the, the market, does the market support the rent growth, the job growth, the population growth? Is there all these things in that market? Mm-hmm. And then, then the third is the sub market. The fourth is the property. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I look at those things uh, when I invest, whether I invest passively or I may become a general partner in those yeah. deals. Hello, hello. This is Abel Pacheco, your host for the Five Talents Podcast. After listening to a few episodes, deep down, do you know that multifamily and commercial real estate investing is one of the best ways to create financial freedom? If you said yes to that question and you are where I was a few years ago, then I'd absolutely love to connect with you. A few years ago, I started personally consuming a ton of real estate education. I traveled all over the country as many real estate conferences and seminars that I could go to. I took 200 plus hours of real estate education. I spent thousands of dollars along the way. And I did this because I knew the path to financial freedom for me and my family was through commercial real estate and syndication. So if you've made a similar decision, I'd love to connect with you. And potentially in the future, I'd love to partner with you as well. Take a moment, go to 5tcre.com forward slash invest and I'd love to set up a time to talk. What, uh, so I say this often, and I'd love to hear you know your your take on it too. The market and sub market. What you de- you define those differently, as do I. In, from your perspective, what does that mean for somebody listening? What uh, what do you mean market sub market? What does that mean? Okay, okay. I I'll give you an example. So I'll give you an example of Fort Wayne. So let's say people see the job growth, the population growth, the crime, 
uh, in Fort Wayne, etc. The go online city data dot com is mostly people use or census. That's what I say all gov, the time. Yep. Or census dot gov people use that those websites and even other websites get their data all the data from census dot gov. Okay. So if you are researching for a property in Fort Wayne, so you. You're researching Fort Wayne. Okay, Fort Wayne has rent growth. Fort Wayne has job growth. Fort, Fort Wayne has population growth. But then the second step is what part of Fort Wayne? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if you're looking at Southeast, it's different. Southwest is different. Mm -hmm, Northeast mm -hmm. is different. Northwest is different. Mm -hmm. So in if you if you have your target market and then you should have a target sub-market too. Not necessarily you want to invest in Fort Wayne and then you end up in Southeast because there's a lot of crime. And sometimes the city is one part of the city is bad area where you don't want to get into, but there are good pockets in every city where you want to get into. So Absolutely. everyone should know how to research the submarkets. What are the um, indicators to look for? Mm -hmm. uh, decide when they decide uh, about the sub markets. Yeah, ab absolutely. So, Thank you so very for much. example, we are we are doing a deal right now in Houston, and mm -hmm. that the deal sold because just and we were oversubscribed in less than three weeks just because that property is in the gallery area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're not from or if you don't know the area, the Galleria area in Houston's pretty prime location. You know, great, great spot, good demographics, yeah. all the things. And, and and that sold the we sold we were sold out in less than three weeks. Yeah, and a uh, pretty big raise, I would yeah, imagine. Pretty pretty big raise, and and uh, we we had to tell our investors, hey, I, sorry, we can't we can't take any more. Better better luck next time. Yeah, uh, commit yep. and wire funds. So faster. that that <laughs> is the power of the sub market. Yes. Absolutely. That, that's, that's good insight. And uh, it's, it's great, you know, just to kind of hear it a little bit more. I think uh, it illuminates, you know, how local real estate really is. There's a difference between saying Houston and Galleria Houston or Fort right. Wayne, you know, in good pocket versus a bad pocket. So it right. makes perfect sense. And sometimes people look, okay, this is, this is two miles from this mall, mm -hmm. but sometimes two malls is a bad area. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, seventy two miles is a bad area. Mm -hmm. Very good. Hey, so on this topic of um, you know, I, even the nuggets that you've shared in this short time, very helpful. And thanks for just breaking them down so succinctly. Right? Um, you like to give back. You like to help others. Coaching, doing that. What are some of the ways that you give back today? You're in a you're in an amazing position to do so. And you know, just you know, how, how do you give back today? Well, uh, first of all, we have a charity and we have had this charity for the last 11 years. And I, ours is a unique charity. We don't, we, don't, uh, we don't accept any donations from other people. So every carton of cigarettes we sell out of gas station, <laughs> we get 10 cents to the charity. I love it. I love and it. And everything else we sell in our stores, we get 2% of that to the charity. Got it. So then we, that, that brings us about $30,000 a year. And then we donate that to several charities all over the world. Mm. So we have, we have been associated with charities here in the town. Mm -hmm. uh, and then charities here in the United States charities in United Kingdom mm -hmm. and charities in India. Yeah. So we are associated with seven, actually six of them are on regular basis. One of them, we, we do time to time help. Mm -hmm. So seven charities, we, we pay them on quarterly basis and some we pay on monthly basis, like the preferred return. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and during this COVID, Mm -hmm. uh, I decided to share my knowledge. So I have a Facebook group. Uh, probably You probably know 10X Multifamily Investment Group. Mm -hmm. So I have th uh, 5,000 members. So I decided to coach them for six months for free. That 
the doctors and nurses who were on the front lines. Mm -hmm. So I decided to coach them for six months for free. So mm -hmm. I am about very close to the end end of that uh, coaching program. And that's, that's awesome. Those are some amazing ways to give back. And yep. um, 22 doctors and nurses registered for it. And uh, every coaching class we have, uh, we have like 14 to 20 people on that coaching class. Wow. What a tremendous uh, value and then a tremendous opportunity for somebody uh, that, you know, is, is giving back themselves and then you able to help them. And then the way you, you give through the, uh, your, ch you know, the charity, the way it's funded and the way you give back are something special. Uh, it's one thing to write one check, you know, for a large amount, if you're in that position to do so, it's another thing to carve off a piece of, of your profit and do it on a regular basis. And I think that shows a lot to, uh, you know, your intention to give back, um, mm -hmm. They, they say, they say, and I think this is, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure it came, it's in the Bible, uh, but it, it says like, you know, if you want to follow uh, or find a man's heart, you know, you're going to follow his, follow the source of his money. Right. And uh, you know, I think on that side of it, it's like, Hey man, follow, follow your money. I, I can see clearly KK, you've, you've got a lot of it coming and there's your heart, man, to, to, yep. to give back. So that's, that's awesome. Yep. We, we have adopted 15 kids in South India uh -huh. since 2009. So they, there is a charity that we are associated with, uh, 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 Forgotten Children Worldwide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when, whenever they become 18, they go, to, go out, out of that foster uh, house where yes. they live. So we adopt some more. So we oh, have really? Been, yeah, we have been doing this for since 2009. Wow. And we, and we started with 10 children. Now we have 15. <laughs> Man, that's, uh, I'm sure your heart is full, my friend. I'm sure your heart is full. Uh, that, that must feel amazing. Yep, that that be, gives us peace of mind. Yes, sir. To help others. It, mm -hmm. I mean, God has given us so much to why not share with others who yep. are less fortunate or they need, they need. Man, that's uh, that's amazing. So congratulations on on all of that. And uh, I know, you know, when when you give, when you give, you're a, a big recipient of that. There's there's no ten x, there, yeah, a ten x. There's there's no way you can you can buy that feeling anywhere else except for you know being able to give back. So that that's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, bef I have a couple more questions, but before you go, I want to make sure you know while we're here. Uh, where can our listeners, viewers reach out to you? If they're trying to get closer to your world, maybe look at a future investment or something, what, what, where do I you know, reach out to you? And, or maybe I want to get some coaching. Or what, where, do they, where do they reach out? Well, first of all, I, I don't coach to, for profit. Okay. I don't call, coach for profit. So, but anybody needs any kind of help, any of your audience or anybody hearing this podcast, they can connect me with me on 10X Multifamily Investment Group. Mm -hmm. I'm there all the time answering people. They can get on my calendar, schedule a Zoom call, any questions about single family, multifamily, gas stations, laundromats, whatever <laughs> questions, yeah, or, or even charity. Yeah. And I, I found my charity myself, didn't hire any attorney or anything. I, I did the nonprofit uh, mm -hmm. Uh, status myself so anybody who needs any help with anything and they can get on my calendar find me on uh, on linkedin yeah I, i'm on linkedin every day and i'm on facebook every day or they can go to our website growrichcapital.com okay yep and uh, fill in the form and uh, schedule an appointment whatever they like to do all right. That, that's awesome. I, I have a feeling so a few people are going to take you up on that as they're probably already doing so. So um, I, I do, I coach as well for multifamily syndication. I did, um, you know, probably sounds like probably like you, I joined a number of programs, as I mentioned, and that education that I got and I enjoy helping other people. Um, tell me the benefit of being a coach. So you know, you coach others and it obviously feels great to give back. That's one. Um, but also, you know, what are the, the side benefits of, of offering your time and, 
your attention to help others, you know, in, in this, in this side of the, the business? The biggest benefit I have uh, realized so far is you're learning yourself. When you're mm-hmm. coaching, you're learning yourself. That's the biggest benefit I have had because yeah. the people you're coaching are not kids. They're experienced people. They have, they just don't have this kind of knowledge. I mean, just as doctors, I have doctors that I'm coaching. Mm-hmm. They're more, they're more educated than I am, but they just don't know what, how to do multifamily. Sure. So you're learning a lot other things. I have had students uh, from different fields of life and I have learned a lot. And then also when you're, when you're coaching others, you got to get prepared for it. You're not just going to get on the phone and, yeah, and just weighing start it. coaching. Yeah. You got to prepare for it yourself. And then also uh, when, when you're coaching them, you're learning yourself as well. Yeah. I, I've experienced the same. It's, it feels like the math tutor example is exactly like you said, you're going to be able to, to do the equations a little bit better, faster, and you got to prepare and you got to know. And yeah, that's, yeah. that's it. Uh, do you, um, you know, for somebody that says, you know what? Uh, and this was me. So I'm going to give you my example. I go, uh, I've only done like a few deals. I've, I've, I'm in like right now my, my, you know, I'm in 800 doors, 400 as a passive investor, a couple of deals as a co-sponsor and a syndicator. And, you know, really I, I kind of felt like, uh, I don't know if I could be the coach. I don't know. I'm not the expert. I'm not the guy at the front of the room. I'm not, you know, that, that was originally how I felt about seven, eight months ago. Um, for that, for that person that says, well, I have a little experience. I don't know if I can actually help somebody. Can, can, can anybody kind of help somebody through a process if, uh, you know, or I, I guess what would be the advice for that person that has that, that feeling of, ah, I don't know if I should be a coach to somebody else. I think uh, this is more of our uh, accountability thing rather than coaching because then you are holding somebody accountable. Let, let's say uh, you tell your student that you got to make five calls to the broker. Mm-hmm. So basically, <laughs> basically he has got to get do it before he comes back to you again. So it's kind of more of an accountability thing that they get out of their comfort zone and do it. Yeah. Otherwise they might not do it. And I have seen people learning, 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 never taking any action. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And, and same thing I have seen a lot of investors. They know about every syndicator. They know about every deal they are on everybody's list, but then they have never invested. Yeah. They're yeah. so fearful there. They have never invested mm-hmm. because they are fearful. Mm-hmm. And and unless you take action, whether you're whether you're a syndicator, whether you're a passive investor, whether you're in some other business, unless you take action, nothing happens. You may have vast knowledge, but unless you take action, nothing yeah. is going to happen. And by by just knowledge, I I give you an example. So if you learn from a podcast or read a book, how to swim. You can't swim until you jump into the <laughs> swimming pool. Uh, perfect analogy, my friend. Yeah. Perfect analogy. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Thank you very much for sharing the insight. I think that's great. And the accountability side. So, uh, I, you know, I, I'm in a similar mindset. I, I think anybody that's done something before, like once you've jumped into the pool and you know how to swim. You, you'll figure it out. Yeah, you, you're going to jump. Out. <laughs> you're going to jump and you're going to make it happen. Yeah. Right? And, and the same thing, sorry, same thing I'm, I'm saying is when I bought these single family portfolio and uh, I, I, had, I had no time to go at nine o'clock and come back five o'clock. I had other stuff to do. Mm-hmm. So I figured it out. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I figured it out. So kind of I jumped into the swimming pool without knowing how to swim. But once I was in the swimming pool, I figured it out. Yeah, absolutely, man. So, th- so thank you very much for the insight. I think it's been amazing. Uh, is there anything else that I haven't asked you about? Uh, anything you wanted to highlight, or you know, any any wisdom? Any, just anything in general? Well, I want I want to say one thing to your audience uh, that always, always, always invest in yourself before you invest in any real estate. 
So make sure you, you invest in yourself. Do you learn whatever you're doing? You could lose all your money in one shot in real estate if you don't uh, invest in yourself. So mm -hmm. basically the time. Yeah, that's, that's a, a fantastic uh, last nugget and last piece of wisdom. I, I think that's very, very true. Uh, win, lose, or draw on the real estate side, your education, no one's going to take that away from you. And whether you, if you lose, you know, or, or don't quite win, you're still going to, you still have the education. You're going to be that much better for the next round. So invest in yourself. I agree. Mr. KK Singh, thank you very much. It's it you. Is awesome. Thank you very much for having uh, or for you. coming to us uh, on the show, man. Um, so let me, uh, we'll just say this last part and, uh, you know, just again, thank you very much for, for all of, all of the, uh, all the things that you provided, uh, to our guests and, uh, just really appreciative that you take the time to give back and coaching and everything. And just wanted to say thank you as the last, last parting word here. Thank you very much for having me, Abel. Yes, sir. It was my pleasure to be on your show. Yes, sir. Thank you. Again, um, I'm Abel Pacheco, your, your host for Five Talents. Uh, hopefully, uh, you had a pen and a paper. If you didn't, and you're in your car driving, go back, rewind, and get a piece of paper and a pen when you get to the house. Take some notes. There's some really good ones here. Uh, uh, again, Abel Pacheco, if you want to reach out to me, uh, you can reach out to our website, 5 t cre.com that's 5tcre.com or five towns commercial real estate um, and if you heard anything that provided you value which i know you got some value today um, go back and please leave us a positive review five-star review would be amazing on our podcast uh, leave a written review and give, give uh, you know mr kashan kk singh a little bit of nuggets and feedback too i'm sure he would appreciate it and uh, thank you very much it's been a great show thanks kk Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Five Talents Podcast with your host, myself, Abel Pacheco. Each week, we're going to bring you interviews from industry experts and commercial real estate investors who follow their dreams and achieve massive success. Before you leave, let me ask you a few questions. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn something valuable? Was your mind stretched to what's possible and what you can achieve? Do you want other experts just like the one you heard today? If you answered yes to any or all of those questions, then please take a moment to subscribe to the Five Talents Podcast, give us a five-star rating, and most importantly, leave us a written review. Tell us what you liked, tell us your favorite guests, give us any feedback. I'm excited to learn and improve so you can get a more valuable show. So thank you again for subscribing to the Five Talents Podcast.